Greetings and salutations, all you lovely individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, uh, for some LCK LPL highlights. We're previewing the finals weekend in the LEC, but we begin with yet another historic, it's always historic, when we get a new installment of the Telecom War. Last one, remember, pre-EWC, this is what kind of began the slump for T1, was dropping that series to KT. The T1 home party that was busted up by the KT squad, you. breaking it up and raining on everybody's parade. No such thing today. It is redemption for T1. They find a way through this series. But I say series because it went the full distance. We have the full three games to dive into and starting with that very first game and you get the uh, the Emperor of the Sands for Mr. Faker, the unkillable Demon King in the mid lane and looking very comfortable on that Emperor of the Sands shifting through with the rest of T1 in game one. Yeah, this very much looked like the start of a bounce back for T1. You got Guma and Kyria completely outplaying some 3v2 dives by the end of it. You have Owner, Faker, and Kyria all going deathless. Only four kills total was KT able to muster. And uh, all of a sudden, Owner's Poppy is becoming such an iconic pocket pick for him. I think back to Worlds, the big play that he has early for T1. This Poppy has been a money champion, I think, for Owner. I think at the same time, you certainly have a couple moments in the back of your mind, in the nightmare chamber that you can Google back to and think of some very, uh, you know, uh, stall, you know, performance stalling out type of things from Owner on that Poppy champion. Today, not the case. Very much so the one that is that Havoc is the one whirly dirling it around with that hammer making sure that it is havoc on this side of kt and you know it still took 30 minutes but really it was uh t1 in control uh pretty much fully for that first game game two is where this spicy looking draft comes in and initially i'm looking at this kt comp with the seraphine leona bot lane the ivern jungle lucian mid and i what is this a uh, hyper carry lucian comp I, I, I guess that's how it was going to go, but I, I don't know if all of KT was on that page. I think uh, Perfect thought it was all about the hyper carry Renekton in this yeah, game. I got the 1v5 flank. Look at me. Look at me. I'm gone. He's calling his own play uh, centuries before the rest of his teammates find a way to get into the play, but it doesn't matter because by that point, so many advantages built up on the side of KT. A lot of punishes on the side uh, of T1 on a couple of these mistakes, some questionable choices. I think one of the big ones for me is going to be looking down into the bottom lane. And you see the Senna, which is, you know, uh, we've seen have some power still, some staying uh, positioning in within the meta, but at least pair it up with something like maybe an Orn, the Scion that we have seen through, get something going through. The Sejuani comes through. For Kyria in this one, and I don't think that this was the pick that you needed. It didn't quite have the the engage that you can get and the range that you bring through on something like Orn and the other uh, things that it adds for the team. The Sejuani did not be the pick that I wanted to see come through here, and I made it even worse to see the ending with all five members of KT surrounding the Nexus. You've got the T1 death timers all staged out across and you can't hit a single one of the five members with that Sejuani ultimate. Come on, we all know that's gotta be one of the most generous hitboxes in all of League of Legends. Every now and then, Kyria makes a play where you go, that's Kyria? <laughs> but luckily for Kyria and the T1 boys, absolute redemption comes his way in this third game because the Caitlyn Lux duo for T1 was basically the full story for this one. Deft Zeri, I've never seen a Zeri put so far behind. I think at one point it was like 51 CS to 23, just in the straight up 2v2. T1 showing uh, why this Caitlyn Lux duo is, regardless of meta, almost always such a lane bully comp. Oh God, what a what a scary duo that was. And you've laid it out before it. You have moments where you're going, that's, that's Kyria? And you had moments in this game where you're going, that's Kyria, that's my guy. That's the support for T1 and what he was doing in this one. That bottom lane duo, that Caitlyn Lux, that power combination between the two of them, the root, the cupcake. 
all of it working fantastic for T1, setting depth so far behind on the Zarya. And I think one of the uh, things in this game three, Barrow on the Nautilus was hitting some fantastic hooks on that Nautilus. The only problem is in the bottom lane, you hit any of those hooks, well, you're bringing yourself right into range for Lux to hit a very easy rune on you. And then there's the cupcake and then there's another rune and then there's the cupcake and then there's you're dead. And that was an easy way to keep accelerating this bot lane for T1, which was unfortunately necessary because you can take another avenue in this game three and check in on the mid lane. And BDD was having his day with Faker on the Corky. This was the Corky that was prioritized in draft from T1 to get Faker power pick to get him some comfort, to get him that stability in the mid lane. And you didn't really have it until maybe uh, past the 20, 25 minute mark in this game. Eventually gets online, has the impact in the team fights, but absolutely an angle where you don't have the bot lane popping off the way that they were. This was going to be another KT upset. Yeah, games two and three, honestly, a little bit sus uh, out of Faker. The Talia game, uh, he was getting solo killed. And then, yeah, the Corky never really. Did too much. Luckily, as you said, the bot lane stepped up. Zeus also had a solid performance on the day. He had uh, some nasty Cassante all outs over the wall in that third game. And even a decent uh, Jace performance before. So everyone stepping up, I would say, sans Faker in this series. A little bit better. And I think this is one of those ones where maybe it gives you a bit of that uh, breather, a bit of that life into this T1 roster, into this run that you're going to have towards the end of the split knowing that, okay, maybe we're not going to be able to get the full break. We're not going to get a reset. We're not going to get a vacation here to separate out, chill out, and come back in fresh, focused, energized, all these type of things. But we can utilize the time between the matches, right? Just like everybody else, you have that little break after you go through you know, the Wednesday to Sunday, and then you have that little break before it. T1 is finding their moments within this schedule to take that recharge. And I think that's where you saw on the Rift this more reorganized version of T1. Not necessarily the T1 that is a world championship T1, but a T1 that I think can be more confident in challenging the Hanwha Lifes, the D plus Kia, where you're going to have to challenge them before we can even talk about the big raid boss that is Gen G at the top. And how about now, quietly, uh, Fear X, a four game win streak. Two wins against T1 and KT. They're now sitting in the playoff picture. And after this loss, KT is in seventh. That is the consequence of having the atrocious start that KT had to this split. And really, uh, you know, uh, pretty much on from the outside of the first two months of the split, what we were able to see from them. That's the consequence. You put yourself in one of these positions where it is almost got to be all go, all positive, all gains. Because if you have a slip up, if you have a setback, you are absolutely at the mercy of these other squads making a type of push like Fear X has done. And especially one where Fear X has gotten those extra points against you, taking it away in that matchup, the double point value, that ain't good for KT. All of a sudden, there's legit. You got to be winning if you're these bottom three, four playoff teams in KDF, T1, KT, and now Fear X because there's pressure from all around the league. The number was four on the day for top esports their fourth series win in a row and yes all of them have been in 2-0 fashion it was another tian clinic on the lilia in this series against anyone's legend as he keeps pace with ruler and tarzan right near the top of the man of the match listing so far in summer when did this happen? I need someone to point it out. Who is the Tian scholar out there that knows the timeline and the you know figuration of the stars in the sky that it happened, that he's all of a sudden become one of the best Lilia players that I've ever seen out there on Summoners. He's supposed Street. to be a washed up pro back in 2021. Washed up. He's supposed to be, a, you know, maybe a Lee Sin one trick hidden in there a little bit, whatever. My man busting out the Lilia. Uh, he's looking at like yike out there out there in the lec popping off on lilia making stuff happen for this top esports squad this was a great 2-0 for them on the day because it was absolutely one that did come with a bit of fire a little bit of heat from anyone's legend still providing enough that you don't want to slap on that fraud label that we all talk about and, and deal with in the lpl so often you, you want to stay away from that enough because there was a bit of a pushback but from top esports this was certainly a, a a message sent out to anyone's legend to say look 
You might have had your fun in that early fearless draft part portion of the LPL, but now it is the big boys club and you got to put on your big boys pants to step up with us. Uh, they're still in their diapers is the way anyone's legend has looked at this point. Yeah, three losses in a row now since they had that nice 3-0 start. But yeah, when you're going up against the absolute elite of the elite in the LPL, uh, it's the total end of the other end of the spectrum as TES now sitting at 4-2. and two. Back in that realm with BLG and LNG where we're accustomed uh, to seeing them. It's finals weekend in the LEC, but... Don't confuse it. It's just the summer split finals. We have the season finals, which will go on afterwards. My God, I can't wait for this format to be streamlined next year. It's, it's one of these ones where on paper and reading it out and kind of going through it, maybe you're like, yeah, okay, that sounds kind of cool, getting this type of event towards the end of it. Reality plays out very differently, and it is one of these ones where it feels completely unnecessary to have that next section but that's all different. That's all future Mark and Eric's problem to deal with and talk about and discuss. Now we're dealing with the present. And the present right now is this summer split closing out. And we've got this lower bracket section to finish out before we get to talking about the two big dogs, the El Clasicos, the G2 and Fnatic waiting through. We've got to look at that first matchup uh, in the LEC. Yeah, BDS, K Corp, and series has started as we're recording this series or you know getting onwards with game one but truthfully heading into this one the way bds won their series to get here you've got a massive 10k throw by the mad lions an 80 carry 2v5 that they had no business winning if it was patch 14.4 the tristana doesn't do that k corp should honestly be favorites going into this series if you're going off of what we have seen since we stepped into this best of uh, scenario for, for the LEC summer, you got to be rolling with K Corp in this matchup. Although I know a lot of the history, a lot of the other things would be leaning towards BDS. You look at it as you laid out the situations that they have been in. And yes, you do get one check mark saying that you did get through these situations. But we're kind of taking two additional red X's beside that one check mark to say, well, you put yourself in these positions to start with, and there's, you know, that performance and everything that goes in that conversation. That is why you don't have the confidence in a squad like BDS. I think individual players, a best of situation like this, absolutely can rise up on the day, can be that X factor for BDS to separate themselves from where Carmine Corp has grown to. With the meta, with people playing like upset at a, at a very high level, Carmine Corp has got a path to victory, no question about it. Especially when you've got a Korean Jace sighting in the oh, top lane. Kana been rolling through the Jace in these playoffs and kind of opposite numbers when you talk about him and Adam. Adam has some pretty good laning numbers. Kana less so, but as soon as team fights have rolled around, his impact has most definitely been felt. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to get anyone, you know, going crazy here because this is not a Kana that you're all of a sudden ringing the alarm and going, uh, coma, w pay attention. What do you mean? You're, you're missing out on this guy with T1. It's not anything like that, but it absolutely is a Kana that is finding more of the form that made him one of these prospects with potential on T1 in the LCK. And that type of contribution for Carmine Corp. And as you laid out a little extra angle, little extra dash of spice of getting some Korean Jace games in the meta, that could be another thing in the pocket for Carmine Corp. The truth is, whoever wins this series going to be huge underdogs against G2. And the bigger question, even though they won the head-to-head -head in winners, G2 is probably still the overall favorite left, right? They have to be, but I'm tentative on that one, at least at this point. And it's not because... I'm totally saying this is it for G2. This is where the iceberg hit the Titanic and it's all going down. No, no, no. It is simply a question of whether you feel like this bounce back, this resurgence, the revenge is going to happen this weekend or if it's going to happen more so towards that other big summer final that we're working towards in the LEC. I've got a feeling that it's going to be towards more so that bigger summer final event type of thing. I think it's not going to have been an immediate patch fix, turnaround, flex seal, seal it all up for G2. I think there still were enough things that went wrong and that weren't going right for them in that series against Fnatic, even if it was as exciting as it was the way through all the way those five games. I think Fnatic has more to play for. 
assuming that there is a rematch in the finals. They haven't won an LEC title in a long time. They haven't beaten G2 in an elimination best of five in, yeah, you know, three plus years at this point. So I feel like G2, there's a whole other tournament still to play out in the season finals. I wouldn't be shocked if we don't still see them at that 100% do or die level until those season finals. So I'm thinking Fnatic gets it done, already got their berth to winners, but Definitely feel like it's still a G2 Fanatic angle. They feel higher level than K Corp or BDS. But Carmine Corp, if they beat BDS, then we're talking about them in season finals. So they got the most to play for out of any of these four teams left. Can you imagine the blue wall in the finals going over back to back? For that 10th place finishes, and here they are. Oh, what a redemption arc for this group. The Carmine Corp, the blue wall, they have been. Very vocal, very supportive, for the most part, all the way through these very rough early. When they're winning, point. they're really supportive. Absolutely. And winning a playoff series like this, winning a playoff series potentially against one of the most iconic franchises in the LEC to set up one against another one in the finals. This could be fantastic for Carmine Corp this weekend. All assuming it goes to a plan against BDS. Otherwise, it is BDS getting another crack at their G2 Demon with a chance to take a full title against Fnatic, a Fnatic that has resurged to being one of the top teams of the LEC, providing that type of challenge. And for me, as an LCS fan watching all of this, I'm just eating it up because Fnatic is sitting in the finals, and I know Team Liquid has got the edge on them. Yeah, that's true. You know, It doesn't matter how good they look here. TL greater than EU and Fnatic, but LCS also is back. Obviously, those finals in the LEC and Hanwha Life versus D Plus, the headliner for Saturday games this weekend. Plenty of good stuff to look at. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.